I've been trying my hardest to find out how to make handwritten animated text in Blender, and I finally figured it out. I'm gonna share it with you today. It's pretty simple and straightforward, and a ton of fun when you see the final result. So here it is, and I didn't even use curves. I actually use vertices, and I use a skin modifier to give those vertices or edge lines thickness. I then use the build modifier to do that animated building, which follows basically the skeleton, if you will, of each letter. So let's get started. I'm using Blender 4.2. I don't expect many of these features to change, but you never know because Blender is crazy like that. So I'm going to start by creating a text object, and that is only for tracing purposes. So I'm just gonna write my name, Daniel, and then I'm going to give it a cool font. And by the way, I am so annoyed the fact that Blender can't browse my fonts. Um, like in that drop down, I have to manually go through all this and I have uh, like 1500 fonts. So it's kind of annoying. If you are a designer that finds yourself having way too many fonts to look through in Adobe and other programs, I highly suggest you use Nexus font. It's a free program. I use it to organize all of my fonts and uh, yeah, it's really great just to be able to browse through your fonts. Anyway, that was not an advertisement, it's free. Uh, let's find a cool font that has a nice handwritten effect because those look best, right? When you're just handwriting in an animated fashion. This one's pretty cool. Let's see how this one looks. Oh yeah, that'll be perfect. I'm just gonna scale it up and it's a little narrow. I'm gonna like, stretch it out that way. Okay, cool. This will be perfect for the effect that we're doing, right? I'm doing everything here in a flat above view, which is number seven, which gives you that flat you know, overhead view. Um, we're going to start with our first letter. I'm gonna click over here at the very start of the letter, shift A and go to mesh. Instead of creating an actual shape like you're used to, we're gonna make one single vertices or one single vertex, add single vert. There we go, it's right there, it's just one vertex. And we're gonna switch over to vertex mode over here in the top left. Now in edit mode, which you're already in, by the way, when you create the vertex, you're already in edit mode, I'm gonna press E to extrude. Now we're basically gonna draw, like I said earlier, the skeleton of the letter. And then the thickness is not only gonna be created by modifiers, but we can control the thickness along the letter. That's the hardest part that I could never figure out how to do with the curve animated trick, uh, is you can't vary the thickness of the curve. Now, I think there's an end and beginning taper that makes it sharp, right? But the rest of the letter, I could not make it thick and follow, you know, um, a different uh, variation of thickness. And a lot of fonts do that. The, the good ones, I like that they have variety of. Okay, so we just drew the D. Um, now let's do some modifiers. So modifier tab, shift A. First, we're going to do subdivide, right? To give me some extra vertex or yeah, extra vertices in the middle. And I'm going to put it up pretty high, like three or four. I'll go to four. Cool, that's super smooth. Now we're gonna give it, give it that magic thickness using the skin modifier. There we go, already got the thickness. And then lastly, we're going to use the build modifier, which will allow us to animate it. Now I'm going to do, I'll do 20 frames per letter. Um, my last animation you saw earlier was 10 frames per letter. We're gonna do it slower uh, just because I want to, okay? Now let's uh, go back into edit mode select all of your vertexes or vertices. I'm sorry, I don't know which word to use. And here's the weird trick. I don't even know what this command is, but it's control A. It scales the vertex and S doesn't do it. S does everything, but control A, I'm not sure you guys smart out there. Tell me what is control A? Is that like individual scale? I don't know, but it's magical. So we're going to do this. I want to make the ends really sharp. So control A teeny tiny, right? Super sharp. Let me see if I can have a better view if I do uh Random colors, there we go, that helps. So the blue is the text object, the green, yellow, whatever this thing is, is the one that I'm doing. And I'm, this font that I use doesn't vary in thickness, so boo on that. So I'm gonna, gonna do it manually. I'm gonna make some parts thick, some parts thin to give it some cool, cool style. So as you can see, you have you know very low poly points, but it does all the smoothness for you. And I love that kind of editing because it does the hard work for you, as software should. Um, I'm using right click for, for select because I'm old school. So I can right click and hold and drag my vertex and then do control A to, you know, add the thickness to it. I'm going to have this thickness kind of taper off as it gets down here lower, right? Because as you speed up with your handwriting, it kind of gets thinner. There, and then that last one would be real sharp. You can add your own little flair to it. You don't have to follow the font exactly because no one's going to be inspecting saying, did he follow this font perfectly? No, no one's going to do that. Okay, awesome. So let's uh, open up our graph, which is our fancy timeline. And you can see from between frame one and 20, it draws. Awesome. 
Now that ends should end at 20, right? Yep, it ends at 20. That's when the next letter should start, but we'll mess with that later. Okay, so we have the D finished. Let's start with the rest of the word. Now this font happens to be cursive and it also happens to line up. There are some nice cursive handwritten fonts out there that aren't connected, right? The letters are separate. They're disconnected from each other. So for those, I would do separate objects for each letter. But for this one, I'm actually gonna do something different. I'm gonna do one continuous, you know, swipe one object, one uh, mesh for the whole uh, A-N-I-E-L part. So I'm gonna click here because this is where the letter A starts in cursive and shift A and let's make that in a single vertex again. And then let's start extruding with E. And we will just copy and paste the uh, modifier setup. I'm gonna make these go up a little bit higher. Like I said, this font doesn't have varying thickness. I like the ones that do. So I'm gonna add that myself just as a personal um, preference. And I'm gonna make um, like the long fast parts of the writing, hopefully thinner. And then the slower, you know, curved parts may be thicker. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. And I'm a little rusty on my cursive, so I think this is how it goes. This is definitely not a good shape right there. There you go. Yeah. Just going to go straight through and down. And a nice little swoopy tail to finish it off. All right. So we have our... Um, Skeleton, <laughs> I don't know what to call it. It's not a curve, it's not a mesh. It's just a bunch of uh, edges, right, lines. Now we're going to select uh, this as our target and then this is our active object. And we're gonna do control L for link and go down to copy modifiers. There we go. So it has the modifier setup as you can see, but it's not thick. Why? Well, you have to tab into edit mode and press, uh, let's select that very first vertex here and do mark root. There we go. That kind of just resets the skin modifier. I don't fully understand the skin font modifier yet, so I, that's just how I know to make it work. Uh, so let's uh, select all with A and then control A to size them all down to like a good middle you know, thickness. And then we can start really customizing the position with G or just click and drag for me and control A to uh, add the thickness of, uh, of, the, of the selected vertex. And the dot of that the dot of that eye will be super simple. We'll add that um, and time it correctly in just a minute as we get all this manual work done. But I cannot believe I never found a solution for this online. Maybe I didn't long enough, look long enough, but uh, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say no one has ever done this in the history of Blender. You know, wishful thinking, right? We always always want to be the first. But uh, I think this is a far better way to draw letters. Now, the final result, I'll probably use a white emission material in Eevee and the render on pure black, right? So that in post, I can use this in Premiere or After Effects. And just it's just going to be a, a flat, you know, I'm not going to make this a 3D animation per se. It's going to be a flat motion graphics type thing. So I'm not really worried about um, the thickness vertically, but this is a true 3D shape. So if you really want to use this as a 3D object, you can. But there are some weird issues like these overlaps um, that I don't know how to really fix yet, other than moving the vertexes uh, away from each other further. But I think when this is all pure white with an emission on black and Eevee, it's not going to show up like that, right? It's just going to be white in a black background. So that's it. Let's hide our text object below it. Nice. And let's press play. Let's see how it looks. Oh, I need to fix my starting time. So D finishes being written at 20 frames. So let's start the rest of my name at frame 20. There you go. Now, if you'd had individual letters, you need to time each one uh, based on how long you make it last for, you know, the length down here. You need to make sure each letter begins getting written after the previous one is finished. So they all kind of flow in sequence. Oh, nice and fast. I might slow that down a little bit. I think it's kind of hurrying through because it's so much to cover in that 20 frames of time. Let's do 60. Yeah, a little slow, but cool. Maybe 50. Awesome, looks great. And now let's do that dot. So uh, I'm just gonna click here, single vertex, there we go. And then E to extrude it upward. Cause I want it to start here and go that way. Vertexes I think have some kind of number for them, right, for each object, like they're numbered or there's an index of vertices. Um, and, and the build modifier uses that to know which one to go to next. So that's why this trick works because we're extruding in the correct order of it being handwritten 
and thus it builds in that direction. If you do it out of order or move things around or copy, duplicate vertexes, I don't think this building modifier will work. So just be aware of that. I've had to redo letters because I started in the wrong part or you know did it did it wrong. So um, okay, target. We're going to copy from that. Control L, copy modifier. Select our dot, and then um, select that first one and do mark root, and then uh, size it down. There we go. So it's going to be look like a dash. We could maybe extrude this one more time and make it thin, like handwriting. But if we extrude this first one down, that's basically messing up the, the order of uh, everything. So don't do that. Okay, cool. So to give it that um, motion graphics material, I'm just going to uh, click on the surface and press E for emission. Let's turn it up to four so it's like totally bright. And then assign that same material there. And then my dot there and the background's already black right because i have my world set to black you can put this on eevee so in rendered view there we go pure white on pure black let's hide our grid our floor in our grid nice oh yes that is so good tell me if there's any other better way to do this in blender and i'll be amazed because yeah it's pretty sweet let's do another fun little touch to this let's add a circle I'm going to make this swoop around really fast, right? Like a, like a real quick drawn circle. So here's our first dot. I'm going to do maybe like seven or eight of these there. And then copy the modifiers from there. Control L copy modifiers. Oh yes. I like that already. Um, select my first one. I think I'm going to start it. Select that first vertex. I'm still in rendered view. There we go. Mark root. I want to make the first and last ones really thin. Control A, down super tiny. I wanted to get thick here. Kind of like a retro. <laughs> There's a retro feel to it. And then getting thinner. I want them to overlap a little bit. And this will happen when that last L gets finished, which is at frame boop, boop, uh, 70. So start at 70. And I want it to be pretty quick. Let's try 10 frames. Oh, my dot. <laughs> my dot was slowly creeping up. You see that? Okay, we forgot to time the dot. So that goes up there, uh, which is frame 44. So I'm going to have my little dot start at 44 and only last like maybe five frames. Let's see. A little faster. Let's do three frames. Just like a whoosh. Yep. Oh, yes. Nice, maybe a little slower the circle. 20 frames. Oh, need that material. Not that one, this one. And I don't like how it's going over my name there, so let's give it like a little shape. For some reason this D reminds me of the Disney, the Disney D. Nice. I like it. Now, once you've got all your animation set, you know, your composition decided, we're going to set up our camera. So I already have a camera in this scene, which is the uh, active camera. I'm going to press control alt zero to grab my viewport and turn it into my camera view. So that looks good. I just need to move my camera up so I can do GZ like that to set it and make sure everything lands within my frame. Yes, it does. Uh, and then let's go to our animation settings. This animation is totally done at 100 frames basically i'm going to give a few extra frames that i can use to freeze if i'm using this in premiere so i'll go to 110 frames enter and 30 frames a second at hd resolution 100 percent scale and then i'm going to tell it where to go into my renders folder i'm going to name it daniel writing animation except and i don't need this to be a png image sequence right because it's just super simple so it's an MPEG, specifically an MP4 right there. And very important, I need my video codec to be H.264. So anything can read it and I can use it in anything. Uh, awesome. So that is it. Next, I'll just hit render and I'm done. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you learned some great tricks. If you have any comments or answers to my confused questions in this video, be sure to comment down below. Check out my other tutorials on this channel. 